Hi there, my name is Raval and today we're going to be talking about Git Flow. So what is Git Flow? Git Flow is a set of guidelines that developers can follow when using version control. This is also referred to as a branching model. Please note that Git Flow is not hardcore rules but guidelines which are not set in stone. How does Git flow work? Git flow works with a central repository. The developers in your team will clone the central repository and work locally. They will then push their branches to the central repository. There are two branches that are used to record project history, master and develop. Develop serves as an integration branch for features for developers to work off and the master branch stores the official release history. So I'm going to take you through how a team would work, would work with Git flow. So let's go to a diagram here. And here we go. This is a diagram that describes how a team would work with Git using Git flow to manage their commits. So this diagram may look a bit confusing when you first look at it, but I'm going to take you through it. On the right hand side, you will see just here there is blue dots representing commits to the master branch and here in yellow you'll see yellow dots representing commits made to the develop branch. So when you first start your project there will be a master branch. One of your developers will then create a develop branch from master and the develop branch is the branch that your team should work off. So back to creating a feature. Let's say we have a developer named Jane. Jane needs to start working on a new feature. What Jane will do is pull the latest copy of the develop branch to her machine. Jane will then fork develop and create her own feature branch. Jane will then begin work on her feature in her feature branch. She will commit to this feature branch. Once Jane has completed this feature branch and she has tested her code, she will pull the latest copy of develop and merge her feature branch into develop resolving any conflicts. Once that's done, she will then push develop. If you see here, let's take a look at what Jane would have done. Jane would have worked on a feature branch. Feature branches in this diagram are represented by pink dots. So let's say Jane pulled develop and forked just here. So this is a feature that Jane will be starting. She will commit to this new feature branch numerous amount of times. Once she's happy and she has tested her code, she will merge it back into develop. So you can see there may have been other commits you can see represented here on the develop branch, but that's fine. Jane will have to pull and merge and make sure there's no conflicts and then push back to develop. So that's how one team member will create a feature branch, how the team manager uh, member will work on the feature branch, and how the feature branch will then be closed and merged back into the develop branch. So this is why we refer to the develop branch as an unstable branch. Even though Jane has tested her code, there are other developers who are doing the same thing and pushing to the branch. We can trust our developers and say, okay, they've tested, but they aren't quality assurance 
a test a test is they aren't testing the full they are not they're not conditioned to understand how to test the full project what if jane has just started to work on a project she has just started in the company and is not familiar with what knock-on effects her code may have this will be tested by a qa team and those issues will be dealt with later and we are coming to that so let's go to release branches so let's say there have been multiple commits now by um, multiple team members who have completed their features so what we need to do is create a release branch by forking the latest copy of develop let's say a senior developer Dan will create a release branch the release branch will contain a predetermined amount of features this could be predetermined by a sprint it could pre be predetermined by a project manager but you don't want to fill your release branch with hundreds of features because each of these features need to be tested so what you do is make sure you have a limited amount of features in your release branch this release branch will have to be tested by your QA team so this can be done in various ways I prefer to deploy your release branch but to a staging server so that your QA team can test all your features all your changes to make sure that those changes are 100% stable any bugs that are picked up by the QA team will need to be addressed and they can be addressed on the release branch itself so any changes you make has to be done on your release branch the release branch branch once completed will be merged back into develop but will also be merged into master when you merge back into master what you need to do is add a version number a version number is a great way of tracking releases and managing your time managing what you're going to what you have done in that release and speaking to your shareholders or stakeholders explain to them this is release xxx this is what we have completed in xxx so your shareholders or maybe even your users can understand what this new version of your software does so let's go back to the diagram and see how we can how how a user or sorry how a developer would create a release branch so let's say Dan, our senior developer here, goes to the develop branch and forks a release branch of the develop branch, and you can see it represented in green here. So the green, the first commit here, is the start of the release branch. Um, it will contain, let's say, Jane's feature from earlier and any other changes that have been made. And they'll be sitting here what Dan would have to do or whoever it is maybe uh, maybe a project manager on your team is say QA team this has now been deployed to our staging server our release branch is available for you to test these are the things that you need to be testing titles and descriptions should be in tickets that your QA team have access to they can use those tickets to test and communicate changes back to the developers if there are any bug fixes you can see here represented by these three green dots that there are new commits made but these commits are, should only be bug fixes and they should not be new features you will also notice that there are other feature branches on the left here but once you have created your release branch they should never ever be any more features that are committed to it you do not want things to get complicated this is a system that makes life easy and if you stick to it it will be a very good and resourceful method for you
once you are happy and once your team is happy, your QA team is happy with all the changes that have been made, your release branch is ready to be deployed. So what you need to do is merge it back into develop, as you can see here, and also merge it into your master branch. And this is where you need to tag your master branch with a version number. So I recommend semantic versioning. There's a link below in the description and there'll be links at the end of this, present, uh, of this video. So um, you can name it maybe 1.2.3 or whatever you feel matches your release. So that's release branches and how they work. Now let's talk about how we would manage hotfixes. Hotfixes are defined as minor fixes to a project. They could be maybe spelling errors in a cop in copy. They could be, you know, maybe a label needs to be changed or something so small that it doesn't require a team of people to test your change. You need to understand that it's very small and can be tested by maybe you and your project manager. So what you would do is not fork off develop, but you would fork off master. When you fork off master, you would be creating a new hot fix branch. You can commit code to your hotfix branch that fixes the bug. And once you're happy with that, once it has been tested, it has to be merged back into master, but as well as develop. The master branch should then be tagged again with a new number and then deployed. So let's see how that looks in our diagram. If we scroll up here for a bit, you'll see here's our master represented in blue and you'll see hot fixes represented in red. So you'll see the developer will fork master. He will then commit his change to the hotfix branch and close it immediately by merging it into master and merging it into develop. You would want to close this feature, oh sorry, this hotfix branch quickly. You do not want to keep hotfixes lingering around and having the same actually with feature branches. You don't want old feature branches just being left around. It just becomes complicated for everyone. So you can see there would be a new tag and a new tag number for master. Okay, so that brings me to the end of how you should work with Git flow. If you have any more questions, please feel free to put them in the comments below. I've also included links in the description. They are on screen at the moment. Very, very good links. I suggest you have a read if you still aren't clear um, about how Git flow works. So thanks for watching guys. Please like and subscribe below and let me know your thoughts as well. Thank you.